Paris layer, and it occurs to me nothing that I have watched recently, even if it's good, I don't see myself ever going back and rewatching it and having that tug on my soul whenever I think of it. That makes me go, God, I have to rewatch that. I have to get back into that. That happens all the time with shows that were made 15, 20 years ago. All the time. Even if those shows aren't particularly good. Smallville is a good example of this. That's a show that's really not great. Especially in later seasons. I mean, it's just, it becomes a mess. And yet, when I think about it, the good memories come through. And the urge to go and rewatch it is palpable. It is unavoidable. And it is irresistible. I honestly can't think of anything that has come out Ten years? Well, maybe not ten years, five years? And anything that is coming out in the future that draws me to it. Now, the Penguin is supposed to be good. I'm sure it's good. I'm not really interested in it. It seems like a good crime drama type thing that's grounded and wonderful. I don't want The Sopranos in Gotham. I, I don't care. I, I just don't care. I'm sure it's a good show. Sure, great. Maybe I'm wrong and it has a lot of Batman-type stuff in it. It's got some comic book stuff. I can guarantee it does not. I guarantee it does not. Because that's not the show they were setting out to make. It's a crime drama, Boardwalk Empire, The Sopranos. It's on HBO. HBO's prestige series are those types of grounded crime drama. Look at your good fellas, your Martin Scorsese, your godfather. I get it. People like that. I don't. Why are you taking the Batman thing that I'm not even a huge fan of Batman, but my comic book stuff, and you're trying to go, hey, 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 we're gonna make it adult, we're gonna make it, mm -hmm, we're gonna make it good, you don't even know what you like, no, I do, I know what I like, it's things that have creativity and imagination in the initial kernel, the foundation cool ideas. I don't see those things being made nowadays. I haven't seen them being made in a while. Now, partially, that has to do with the commodification of creativity. We're not making art anymore. We're making content. We are making a show for every six weeks, we have a new thing, new thing in the pipeline. We need a new thing in the pipeline because we're releasing one episode a week on our streaming service. And you know what? We've got a lull. We've got some dead space here. We need something new because otherwise people will cancel their subscriptions and we lose money. Well, obviously, anyone can tell you that type of process is just an inherently industrialized mass production. Your quality is going to go down. And the fact of the matter is, is that all of these pieces of entertainment, they are artistic endeavors. They are creative endeavors. And mass production does not suit them. If you want a plate a mass-produced plate or fork is absolutely as good at being a plate 
expensive. And if you've got the money, maybe you find some value in that. But inherently, when you slop down your meal on it, it's a plate. A television show, a movie, music. They are not equal. They cannot be. They cannot be mass produced in that manner and still retain the quality of being a good television show, a good movie, a good piece of literature, music, you name it. When you pull out the inherent creativity and you let the fact that the idea was so good, the writing, the person creating was so passionate about this, had such an incredible vision for it, that is the thing that pulled this piece of entertainment kicking and screaming out of the ether and wrested it from the hand of God and put it on the screen. When it was just, hey, we need something, throw, here's, here's $20 million, make it, make something, I don't care, it doesn't matter, it's a superhero, fine, that's great, well, it's a thing, get it, get it done. I'm sorry, but you're going to end up with two different things. One of them is consumable, possibly palatable content. The other is something that I want to keep going back to. I want to keep going back to, I'm going to buy the DVD of this and I'm going to watch it until those DVDs, until those Blu-rays, until those VHS are warped. They can no longer be played because I've played them so many times. I still find value in re-watching them. Seriously, I think, I mean, I had, I went through a period of time where I watched Firefly. 14 episodes, back to back, every night, for like, I'm going to say three months, it might have been six months, it might have been like six months, and I had no problem with it, and here's the thing, I don't even really like Firefly, I like it, but the fact that it is an unfinished thing, is both wonderful because it sparks your imagination and you go, what could have happened? My goodness, we will never know. It's something that will never disappoint because it never had a bad ending. I don't consider Serenity at all canon. And yet we look at it and we go, my God, that's incredible. What a disappointment. What a shame that it never got to live out. And I am of the opinion that were that show to have gone on and done the, you know, five, six, seven seasons that it merited, it probably would have been my favorite show slash, you know, regarded as like the best show ever made. But is anything being put out today that is not inherently massively limited in scope going to engender that same response in the years in the years from now I don't think so I think even the good stuff is going to be you know wow look that was good like the Batman that the penguin is based on I watched it it was entertaining I don't really feel any need or desire to rewatch it and to be perfectly honest, I'm not even really sure if I remember anything about it, other than maybe the soundtrack. Compare and contrast that to The Dark Knight. Batman Begins. They hold, they hold a place in your heart. They have a hook in your soul. And when you think about them, reels you in, it pulls you back, because again, these things, you can tell they were created with the system, essentially.
intentionally working against them. The system was made to filter tons and tons and tons of ideas, both good and bad, into the best ones that could be made. There were, I guarantee there were incredible ideas. Firefly is a good example of this, a great idea. And it comes down and it's filtered through this process. And perhaps, unfortunately, it was deemed, hmm, we can't quite actually make this. It's a great idea. But we actually can't make this. It's too expensive. You didn't budget well enough. The cast is too large. The stories are a little bit all over the place. This is cable. We don't have the budget for these things. We can't do it. It's too ambitious. And these are all real serious problems. But again, what's the problem with having that system as opposed to the one where everything is being made? Well, there's still a scarcity of resources. And now the good ideas butt right up against the bad ideas. And the bad ideas take just as much, if not more, to make than the good ideas. And neither of them, whether you have a hit or not, you're not making any more money. So then what happens? You end up with a situation where only the things that you know are going to make money are ever going to be made. This is why we have the sequelitis. This is why we have only properties that have already established fandoms that have been tried and tested are even considered to be made. Sometimes they come off and they're good, but they did not go through the pressure cooker of yesteryear to be made. And I think that is somewhat reflected in the ideas and the execution of the things that have been made in the past five, ten years. There are some exceptions, but I think those exceptions are actually because the system in which they're being made reflects that of yesteryear. I'm thinking of animation. I'm thinking of Young Justice, uh, you can think of Arcane, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. These are things, the medium, the animation, requires that same type of process that used to be standard for live action. Now, live action is much easier to produce. You don't have the film. You have non-linear editing software. You can kind of shoot crap, pop it together, and everything is much easier. It's less considered. You don't have to think about it as much. Animation still requires that because you can't just shoot a bunch of stuff. Now you have to physically craft everything, and that's what you shoot because that's the only thing to shoot. Plus, it takes much longer to create such a thing. It is not something you can throw together over a couple months with a blank check from Netflix to put something together. You have to build it up from nothing and throw it into this. And even there again, all three of those things are all based on existing properties. Young Justice is DC. Arcane, League of Legends. What was the other thing I was thinking of? Cyberpunk, Edron, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is less of a prestige property, but it's still an extant thing that had plenty of press around it. They didn't have to spend as much on their marketing budget. And it was a good bet. This is perhaps a call to the industry to go back to a more stringent view on how you produce things. I know a lot of people love 
love to say that, hey, look, the democratization of media, the fact that anyone can produce anything now is a great, wonderful, beautiful thing. There is truth to that, but there is also a loss. The thing that you had actually was a feature. It was not a bug that only a certain number of things got made. It was a feature that you were able to filter and coalesce and craft things. And everyone involved in that had to be massively passionate about that creation. And that is what allowed even low-budget cable TV shows to live rent-free in your head for the rest of your days. I'm sure anyone watching this can think of a show, a movie, a book. A book doesn't really tie into this, but something like that that occurred in that undemocratic past that is now looked back on and go, we'll never get back there. There will never be a new Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. That's not going to happen. Why? Because there's no story that's as good as that, maybe, arguably. Is it because there's no directors as talented as that? Probably not. Are the special effects inordinately expensive, prohibitively so? Of course not. Those will only get better and cheaper. Well then, what is it? It's the entire ecosystem that surrounded that thing that allowed it to be created in the manner that it was. The challenge was the point. The point that you were kicking and screaming and resting this art from the realm of the ineffable and pulling it down into the material world, that struggle is evident in these past works. Now, we just kind of take a picture of that, and we go, yeah, that's, that's good, right? It's, it's like a blurry image of a platonic ideal. That's, that's fine, right? might even be a aesthetically pleasing picture, but it doesn't have that feel of the of the blood and the sweat and the tears. This thing had no right to be made, and yet it was. Someone pulled it and crafted it and hammered on it and blood and sweat, and you can feel it in every single aspect of it. That seems to be missing. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass. But this is certainly the feel, isn't it? Am I wrong? Let me know. Good luck in all your endeavors. Thank you for your time and attention. I shall say farewell.